Donald R. Keough, The Ten Commandments for Business Failure. Isolated leaders create toxic workplaces and failing businesses. Isolating yourself is a surprisingly tempting approach in business, yet it's a direct path to failure. The allure of creating an executive bubble is strong, where a leader can shut out the daily grind and avoid the riffraff. Consider the scenario of a CEO who constructs a fortress-like office, complete with heavy doors, exotic decor, and an atmosphere filled with scented candles and New Age music. This CEO's office becomes less of a workspace and more of a personal shrine, imposing and intimidating to any underling brave enough to bring bad news. Isolation doesn't stop at the physical setup. It extends to daily interactions, or the lack thereof. Leaders who choose isolation never step out of their offices to engage with their teams. They avoid answering their own phones and remain blissfully ignorant of the simplest operations within their own offices, like the location of the copy machine. This kind of behavior doesn't just create distance. It builds walls that are nearly impossible for honest, straightforward communication to penetrate. In these isolated bubbles, executives surround themselves with a small circle of senior staff members, often sharing catered lunches away from the general workforce. This physical and metaphorical separation from the broader team ensures that only filtered, polished information reaches their ears. As a result, these leaders are shielded from the realities of their company, only hearing what their closest advisors choose to share, which invariably paints a rosier picture than reality. This mode of operation can alienate not just employees, but also customers and stockholders. For example, a CEO who successfully increases revenues but only interacts with a select group of top executives will find that this narrow feedback loop is insufficient for sustainable success. Over time, such isolation breeds rumors and dissatisfaction, setting the stage for a potential revolt from within. What's more is that if a leader avoids getting to know employees by name or anything about their personal lives, they miss out on opportunities to connect and build loyalty. This is in stark contrast to more engaged leaders who know their employees intimately, a practice that builds deep trust and commitment. Even in a large organization, maintaining a level of personal interaction is not only possible, but beneficial. Ultimately, embracing isolation is choosing to fail. It's a strategy that prioritizes ego and convenience over effective leadership and corporate health. The most successful leaders understand the importance of staying connected with their workforce and the marketplace. They step out into their operations, learn from direct interactions, and are open to the unvarnished truth about their company's performance and challenges. This openness and accessibility are essential for fostering a corporate culture that thrives on mutual respect, transparency, and shared goals. Thus, for those looking to succeed in business, the lesson is clear. Step out of the bubble, engage directly with your team, and embrace the messy, vital reality of daily business operations. The best way to alienate your customers? Assume you're always right. If you're keen on steering your business towards failure, embracing a mindset of infallibility is an excellent place to start. Cultivating an attitude where mistakes are never acknowledged and problems are consistently externalized ensures a trajectory toward disaster. Here's how this approach unfolds in practice. The first step is to never admit a mistake. Instead, when things go wrong, as they surely will, opt for deflection. Blame external factors or other people, even customers. It's common in business communications, such as letters to shareholders, to see leaders deflecting responsibility in creative ways, attributing failures to anything from currency fluctuations to weather disruptions. This often manifests in passive language, suggesting that errors occurred but not by the hand of the leadership. Take, for example, a real-world scenario involving a globally recognized beverage company, the Coca-Cola Company. 
when several school children in Belgium fell ill after consuming its product, the company's initial response was denial, rooted in their conviction of their product's safety, ignoring the adverse market reaction. Despite the absence of contaminants, public perception shifted negatively, leading to a drastic decline in sales and necessitating a costly and extensive product recall, the largest in the company's history. Ignoring public perception and market realities, in other words, can do immense damage to reputation and image, invaluable assets that must be zealously protected. Schlitt, once one of America's largest brewing companies, provides another illustrative example of the dangers of perceived infallibility. In the 1970s, this brewery, then second only to Budweiser, began to alter its brewing process, introducing chemicals to cut costs and expedite production. Initially, these changes seemed successful from a financial standpoint. However, as soon as consumers perceived a drop in quality, brand loyalty quickly eroded. The once celebrated brand plummeted in popularity, eventually disappearing from the market. This decline vividly illustrates how cutting corners and ignoring traditional industry standards can alienate consumers and obliterate a brand. The critical error in both cases was the assumption of infallibility within management. This mindset leads to ignoring crucial feedback, ultimately resulting in strategic blunders that can doom even the most established companies. In an era where consumer trust and brand integrity are paramount, maintaining a humble, responsive approach to business challenges is essential. The lesson, then, is clear. If you care about your company, reject the illusion of infallibility. Engage openly with criticism, admit errors, and learn from them. Protecting and respecting consumers and stakeholders isn't just good practice. It's vital for long-term survival and growth. Mixed messages create confusion and undermine trust. Here's another surefire recipe for business failure. Send mixed messages. Doing so undermines clarity, confuses stakeholders, and ultimately jeopardizes your company's competitive edge. This practice can lead to inefficiencies and misaligned expectations that disrupt operations and dilute brand integrity. One vivid example of the detrimental effects of mixed messaging comes from the early experiences at the Coca-Cola company, particularly within its soda fountain department. This segment, historically crucial due to its origin and consistent performance, suddenly faced a financial downturn. The root cause? A poorly conceived allocation system introduced in the late 1960s. This system was based on the salesperson's optimistic projections of yearly sales per outlet, which determined the promotional funding received at the year's start. The reality often fell short of these projections, leading to a significant financial mismatch by year end, with the company paying for sales that never materialized. Moreover, this department was caught in a cost-price squeeze. In other words, as the cost of ingredients rose, the company absorbed these increases due to a long-standing policy against raising syrup prices, fearing competitive repercussions and customer backlash. This reluctance was a form of mixed messaging, indicating to the market and internal stakeholders a rigid, unsustainable pricing strategy that contradicted economic realities. The turning point came with fresh leadership, which decided to confront these issues head-on. Despite internal resistance, a decision was made to raise the syrup prices. This move was met with apprehension, as there was a strong belief that it would invite aggressive competitive responses and possibly alienate consumers. However, the increase was necessary to realign costs with revenues and ensure sustainable operations. Contrary to fears, the price increase did not result in competitive disadvantage. Instead, competitors also raised their prices, recognizing the same cost pressures. The broader lesson here is that when leaders send unclear or conflicting signals, whether about policy, pricing, or priorities, it creates an environment of uncertainty and mistrust. Employees are unsure of the direction and principles guiding their efforts, while customers and partners may feel misled or undervalued. 
which can erode loyalty and damage a brand's reputation. Effective leadership, by contrast, involves clear, consistent communication that aligns with a company's strategic goals and operational realities. Leaders must ensure that their messages, both internally and externally, are coherent and support the overall mission of the organization. This clarity enhances operational efficiency and builds trust among all stakeholders. So, if your goal is to avoid failure, prioritize clear and consistent messaging throughout all levels of your organization. This approach fosters alignment, enhances strategic execution, and maintains a strong, unified brand presence in the market. There's no surer way to fail in life and business than to be fearful. Still not sure how to best tank your business? Well, here's another great strategy for failure. Embrace fear of the future. Sure, prudent caution is always a good idea, but overwhelming fear really paralyzes decision-making and hinders growth to boot. Businesses often falter, not just by being risk-averse, but by being overly fearful, losing out on the very opportunities that fear aims to protect against. Consider an analogy from the world of sports. A football team with a lead might start playing too cautiously as the game nears its end, avoiding the aggressive tactics that initially gave them the advantage. This shift often leads to losses in the final moments illustrating how succumbing to fear and abandoning risk can backfire. The distinction between healthy caution and debilitating fear is significant. During the 1930s, despite economic turmoil, there was a prevailing spirit of boldness and optimism in America, epitomized by the phrase, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself, famously declared by the president Franklin Delano Roosevelt. This mindset underscores the belief that fear itself is often the greatest barrier to success. Historically, the concept of the American dream emerged during a period of severe hardship, defined as the pursuit of a better, richer, and fuller life for everyone. This vision thrived on an inherent optimism about the future, a sharp contrast to today's pervasive fear of the unknown. Such fear can be so intense that it not only deters individuals from taking calculated risks, but also from fully engaging with life's potential, setting the stage for inevitable failure. Reflecting on the historical fear of the unknown, such as ancient mariners fearing uncharted waters, modern society benefits from a much greater understanding of the natural world. Scientific advancements have mitigated many traditional fears, enabling safer travel and effective treatments for diseases that once posed significant threats to humanity. The prevalence of knowledge and scientific understanding should, ideally, lessen the fear of the future. However, the modern era has also seen a rise in doomsaying, often backed by scientific data and statistical models that predict dire outcomes. This type of fear-mongering can be compelling especially when presented with what appears to be empirical evidence. Yet, such predictions often fail to materialize, reinforcing that fear, particularly when based on speculative forecasts, is an unreliable guide. In business as in life, the future is inherently uncertain. No amount of forecasting can change that reality. Successful leaders and businesses thrive by acknowledging this uncertainty and proceeding with a balanced blend of caution and optimism. They recognize that while the future is unknowable, their actions and attitudes towards it can either pave the way for success or set the stage for failure. Successful organizations are headed by passionate leaders. Now that we've looked at some ways to guide your organization toward disaster, let's wrap things up on a more positive note. How do you maximize business success? There are many answers, but they all build on the same foundation, an unrelenting passion for the job and a deep focus on your customers and brands. This commitment translates into understanding and meeting the diverse needs and expectations of customers, whether they seek products, services, experiences, or a mix of these. 
Forging an emotional connection with both customers and brands is a powerful strategy to ensure business longevity and effectiveness. Visualizing customers as individuals rather than abstract segments can dramatically enhance the relevance and impact of your offerings. For instance, keeping a visual reminder, like a photograph of a typical customer in a challenging situation, can keep you aligned with your consumer base. This practice not only personalizes the business approach, but also fosters a genuine understanding and commitment to solving real-world problems faced by consumers. Direct engagement with customers, such as listening to them in everyday settings like supermarkets or fast food outlets, also provides invaluable insights that go beyond statistical data provided by market research. This hands-on approach helps build a passionate attachment to the people served by the business, ensuring that their experiences with the products are satisfying and memorable. The power of a strong brand can't be overstated. Brands are not just identifiers of products or services. They embody the quality, trust, and values of the company they represent. A solid brand differentiates commodities from unique offerings, creating a competitive advantage that is difficult to undermine. Research underscores the profound impact of branding on consumer perception. A study highlighted that identical foods presented in McDonald's packaging were preferred over those in plain packaging, demonstrating that a well-established brand enhances the perceived value and quality of products. A brand's success depends on how it is treated. If managed with care and passion, a brand can evoke strong loyalty and passion among consumers and investors alike. Conversely, negligence or mismanagement can lead to a brand's decline. In conclusion, then, a passionate focus on customers and a careful nurturing of brands are indispensable strategies for any business aiming to succeed and grow in the competitive market landscape. These elements foster strong connections that translate into customer loyalty and robust competitive advantages, ensuring that both the business and its brands not only survive, but thrive in the long term.